This is six. Using your target for it. Right now. Enemies locked onto me. Hello my fellow friends, it's Chris from Shughead Gaming, and I'm bringing you my review for Star Wars Squadrons, developed by Motive and published by Electronic Arts, and releasing for consoles and PC as standard versions, but who wants that? More importantly, it launches on PC VR and PlayStation VR on October 2nd, 2020. This review will cover both the PC VR and PSVR versions and include captured gameplay from both. Depending on your region, the game retails for an estimated price of $40. Ever since PSVR headsets were teased with the single VR mission in Star Wars Battlefront, we have prayed to the Sith Lords that EA would give us a complete game of that to satisfy our deep-seated need to play X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter in glorious virtual reality. EA has delivered, bringing us a solo story campaign, 5-player online co-op, and the reason to buy this, a 5v5 squad multiplayer mode. This looks like something we could only dream of as kids, but does it have the goods? Stay with me as I tear it apart and find out. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out my channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, make sure you hit that bell icon. Let's start with graphics. Running on the same engine as the Starfighter Assault mode in Battlefront 2, Star Wars Squadrons looks every bit a AAA title in both standard and in VR, making VR undeniably the way to play this game if you have the means. In fact, watching VR footage from the PC version, one would be hard pressed to point out many differences despite maybe the small amount of detail and resolution drop when looking far out. Not surprisingly though, the PSVR version sees a significant drop in resolution when compared to the PC version, most noticeably when in large scale fights with large structures to fly around, often looking less graphically impressive than the single player VR mission in Battlefront. This unfortunately is to be expected considering that was a limited experience with slower, more constrained flight and considerably less action on screen, not to mention the lack of nine other online pilots blasting around. In addition, the PSVR version has an annoying habit of image stutter when looking around at times, not appearing to be dropped frames but more of a rendering problem. This is on the Pro and the game is Pro enhanced but details are limited on what actual improvements, if any, are in the VR version. Regardless, this isn't a deal breaker as it's less noticeable once you're in the darkness of space and flying around, but it certainly led me to believe that the game is really pushing the limitations of the PS4 hardware and does tarnish the experience somewhat. Those issues aside though, Motive has done an absolutely insane job of optimizing this for the PSVR as it honestly really shouldn't run on this hardware. Despite the drop in resolution and some of the more dynamic lighting techniques, Squadrons on PSVR looks to be much the same as the other versions. Draw distance across all the headsets is great with only a slight bit of texture pop in on the PSVR as higher res textures load in. This is not the norm though, and for the most part, Squadrons does a fantastic job of maintaining a less noticeable and more gradual texture detail technique. The sharper visuals on the PC side of things does make enemy targets in the distance easier to see, but Motive has done a nice job of easing this competitive advantage by combining the cockpit radar with an on-screen target reticule that allows gamers, regardless of hardware, to play on equal footing. Regardless, often by the time you are in range of an enemy target, you are close enough for this to rarely be an issue anyway. As for the PC side of things, I did encounter a few stability issues and some image lag when playing on the quest via the link, but these are likely to be patched up in short order. As for performance on the PC, running on a 2080 Ti and an i9, I ran everything at ultra settings and it looked fantastic. As for the space battles themselves, they are incredible and strike a nice balance of feeling impressively large without feeling overwhelming and overly scripted. As expected, the ship models here are top notch both inside and out, with the almost obsessive level of detail in the cabins rivaling that of a flight or racing sim. Here VR really shines as each of the game's 8 ships feels truly unique in the cockpit and at times can greatly change the feel of the gameplay. Case in point, jumping from the almost claustrophobic tomb-like nature of the Imperial ships into a Rebel X-Wing with its open-styled cockpit was truly a trip, as the feeling of space flying by was almost shocking. In addition to the variety of ships to choose from, Squadrons also does a nice job attempting to avoid the boring and generic quality most space flight sims suffer from, by really attempting to make its six areas feel unique and interesting, by filling these maps with all assortments of debris, hulking capital ships, asteroid fields, and nebulas. Most importantly, these aren't simply used as window dressing, as they are often critical strategic tools that 
can be flown in and around for use in combat. They also have the added benefit of giving the emptiness of space some scale, and as a result, helping to provide a much greater sense of speed to the flight. In fact, the only real graphical shortcomings in Star Wars Squadrons is the flat cutscenes in the single player campaign. And while this is understandable as this is a flat game first, they still jump out when in the headset. Honestly, I could go into great detail of the graphical nuances at play here, but the quick and dirty of it is it looks just like you hoped it would. Capital ships are impressively detailed and show battle damage as they take the brunt of heavy attacks. The darkness of space is filled with laser blasts and explosions as dozens of ships weave in between each other, and all while you actually feel like you're there. And in the year 2020, I think we needed this. Sound is up next. You arrived. Excellent. Otto, meet our new Vanguard 5. Oh, the one who saved your skin at Foster Haven. Ardo Baradai, Fleet Intelligence, a pleasure. I heard they rewarded you with a posting to Chandrilla. A real honor. Very safe. But a good pilot shouldn't just gather dust. Let's hope your feet can keep those shields down. Strike here. We can take down the Vigilance's targeting. Like I said, when reviewing The Walking Dead Onslaught, licensed video games aren't often great games, but what they do often have going for them is access to licensed assets, often making for a very authentic sound mix. And like mostly every Star Wars game I've ever played, Star Wars Squadrons sounds like Star Wars. From the scream of the Imperial TIE Fighters to the classic Star Wars laser blasts, everything you would expect to hear is here, and presented in a wonderfully full audio mix, easily at its best when in VR, and experiencing the nuanced details as your ship's ion cannons erupt outside your ship's cabin. This is truly immersive stuff and really amps up the whole rush of it all. And Star Wars wouldn't be Star Wars without its epic orchestral score, and Squadrons is no different. Veteran game composer Samuel Joseph Smythe, composer of both modern battlefronts as well as the more recent Old Republic expansions, once again does his best John Williams, and grounds squadrons squarely in the classic sounds of the original trilogy. And while part of me wants the Star Wars universe to move on from these tired musical tropes, it just wouldn't feel right playing a game like this without the comfort food of those classic scores. On the single player campaign side, voice work and sound design is also top notch, with performances often better than what we've seen in the most recent trilogy. Really, when it comes down to it, Star Wars simply isn't Star Wars without its famous and treasured catalogue of sounds and music, and Star Wars Squadrons is all too willing to go to that well again and again, but it's handled properly, with a mix that is loud and theatrical like Star Wars should be. And that brings us to gameplay. Ever since I was a kid, my best friend, who was a massive Star Wars fan, would comment on every game release that had ship combat, that they needed to make another X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter game. Of course, there were attempts, but still nothing came close to the depth and quality of X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, a multiplayer-focused game which took the concept to heart and didn't dumb it down. Well, 27 years later, and developer Motive has finally managed to shut my friend up, with the release of Star Wars Squadrons. Squadrons, like XVT before it, puts the online dogfighting aspect right up front, offering two modes to choose from. The first, dogfight, which is pretty self-explanatory, puts you in one of two squads of five, consisting of a showdown between the Empire and the New Republic. Matches are essentially team deathmatch and take place in smaller maps to keep the pace up. The second mode, and really the game's showpiece, is titled Fleet Battles, and sees the same 5v5 team setup, but with the addition of AI reinforcements on both sides, but more importantly, the introduction of hulking capital ships. And while bearing down their own force to reckon with, they are also the key to victory, as the objective here is to take down each other's capital ships to claim victory. In addition, there is also a solo and five-player co-op version of this where you just take on the AI. Personally, this is where Squadrons truly delivers, taking the scale of the battle scene in Battlefront 2's Starfighter Assault mode, but giving it the depth of gameplay from the X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter game. Fans of the series will instantly recognize the return of key gameplay elements seen in XVT, with the inclusion of power management systems to fighters. This feature allows players to quickly adjust on the fly how they want to balance their ship's systems. The default is a balanced mix, but as your situation changes, you may need to boost away from a fight or towards one, requiring you to prioritize your engines to unlock additional speed. Maybe you need to simply throw everything you have at a capital ship, requiring your weapon systems to take the lead, allowing you to not only fire longer, but also to fire off powerful auxiliary weapons in quick succession. And maybe you're just getting your ass kicked and need to help buy time for your hull to be repaired by prioritizing your shields. This all may sound simple, but in the middle of a firefight, this depth of gameplay takes squadrons from a pew-pew laser shooter to something much more strategic. This is made even more interesting as you begin to experiment with different classes of ships across both factions and begin to realize each ship uses the power management mechanic in a unique way. 
An Imperial bomber, for example, can shunt all its power into its engines for a massive boost of speed, giving it speed capabilities of that of the fastest ships, but momentarily stripping it of its ability to maneuver. Strategic decisions such as these are also compounded greatly with the ability to greatly customize your loadout in ways that really matter. From improved countermeasures and proximity mines to EMP blasts and cluster missiles, Squadrons offers 50 different loadout options across the four classes on each side, all of which are purchased by currency you win in-game as you level up your character. In addition to power management and weapon systems, you also have at your disposal a radar and targeting system that is among the best I have ever experienced in a game of this type. Happening in 3D space where there simply is no up or down, space shooters and dogfighting games in general often have the problem of making target acquisition a painful and monotonous task. Here in Squadrons, this is simplified by allowing the player to decide what the sensors want to highlight, then with the press of a button bringing said target up to your radar screen and heads up display. This can be used to find objectives, squad members, enemy NPCs, or even to prioritize real enemy players, making the whole process much more intuitive and fun. In addition, another tap of a button can override that search and instead prioritize the ship in front of you, behind you, or the one firing on you. But what truly makes Squadrons work is its core flight gameplay, which often reminded me of Rogue Squadron meets Elite Dangerous, with a definite space sim feel to its controls, but also never overwhelming. The flight model here is much improved from that of Battlefront 2, as it feels fast and responsive, but never unplayable, simply feeling more refined, and playing well on either the DS4 or a supported HOTUS flight stick if you're fortunate enough to have one on either your PC or PS4. In fact, the only real negative I have with Star Wars Squadron's multiplayer component is that it feels a little lean, with only two modes and six maps. Even with the six maps being slightly modified depending on which mode you're in, the game certainly tries to get by on its quality and gameplay, hoping that its depth and gameplay loop will keep people happy. With crossplay spanning PC, Xbox, PS4, and VR headsets, you will likely see some passionate diehards playing this for years to come, but I truly hope EA and Motive decide to keep growing the multiplayer side of things to keep the player base alive. For those not too keen on getting your ass kicked online by a squeaker whose balls haven't yet dropped, you will find a surprisingly deep player campaign that tells an original story that takes place after the the events of Return of the Jedi, and tells an interweaving story from both perspectives of the Empire and the New Republic. This 8 hour plus campaign sees the Republic searching for a new weapon, only known as the Starhawk Project. The story itself is entertaining and has some nice references to Star Wars lore, but ultimately it's just another weapon they're searching for and isn't really anything that memorable. However, I don't think that most will be bothered as the campaign consists of 16 missions that span a wide selection of beautiful and diverse locations and use what little story there is to keep things interesting, and trying to avoid the space shooter tropes of shoot this, then that. Here you will be doing such things as navigating nebulas, asteroid fields, and hijacking star destroyers. And yeah, a lot of shooting this and then shooting that. But it works, and with the inclusion of some optional side objectives, it actually makes for one of the better solo Star Wars campaigns in recent memory, outside of Jedi Fallen Order, and also makes for a great introduction to the multiplayer component. Star Wars Squadrons is played seated and requires only a minimal amount of room. It requires the use of a gamepad or a supported HOTUS flight stick, which will vary depending on whether you are on the console or PC. Motion sickness could certainly affect some, as this is a full-on VR experience, but in the options you will find the ability to turn on blinders and click turning if you so need it. And finally, that brings us to Fun Factor and my final review. Star Wars Squadrons is first and foremost a really well-made space shooter that also happens to be a Star Wars game. And it is likely this ideology that was present in the motive offices while they quickly made a successor to the famous mid-90s X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter game. Personally, I think this is good enough to sell VR headsets, as even online, I had teammates speaking to me and obviously envious of the Star Wars experience I was having while I sat inside my X-Wing and them on their couch. Yes, the PSVR version does suffer visually, but never to a level that will bother most PSVR owners. In fact, it's still often quite incredible, and alongside the PC VR version, it really is the way Squadron should be played. As you guys know, I hate numbered review scores and instead rate games on a basis of buy it, burn it, or wait on it. So, no surprise here, this is a definite buy, as this is likely to make a lot of top VR game lists this holiday season. Even with its budget price, this is a complete Star Wars VR game, with a legitimate single-player campaign and a surprisingly deep, as well as fun, multiplayer component, which is honestly where the replay value of Squadrons lies. Shockingly, there are no microtransactions, but also there are no current plans to expand the game, so what you buy is the full game for the time being. If you're not a Star Wars fan or simply don't do spaceflight games, then you likely aren't going to grab this, but for the rest of you, get a squad together, and I'll see you in the stars, my friends. Anyways guys, that's it for me. Thanks for stopping by. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.